I was in a studio once. Yeah. And uh, I was, we were recording with Coloride, and uh, the guy said, the, Ian was in doing the vocals. We'd laid most of the tracks down, and the guy sort of said on a little mic through the desk. He's on. Uh, he said, "I'm." Uh, he said, "I'm getting. Uh, you're aware that you're suffering from sibilance because of, I'm, I'm peaking in here." And he and the singer's gone. I, I've, I've never had fucking nothing like that. No rashes or nothing. <laughs> And mate, he's gone. No, it's, a, it's a sibilance. It's when you say your s. It's it's a distortion in your mouth. And he went, "All oh, right, all oh, right, yeah, okay." Yeah, I've probably got that. Yeah, yeah, I've had that. I've had nothing sexual. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. It's the only good thing about um, about going into a recording studio when you don't know anything as well is that everyone will then tell you all of these 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 really cryptic words that you're supposed to know oh, yeah, and, and understand. Yeah. And I go, "Do I sing now or what?" And they're yes, like, sir. well, but I haven't explained. I said, you don't need to explain. You do what you do. That's it. I'll do what I'll do. And then we'll go from there. We'll, we'll compress it all out. We'll, do, we'll put a lot of compression on that. And, and I'm thinking, well, I know what compression is. Yeah, I'm, kind of. I've done real I know exactly what compression is. Are we down on compression? Are we up with good compression? I've got a meter. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll compress it all afterwards. What are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Let's just play beers and go home. Yeah, that's it. That's, okay. all, that's all I want to do. Why don't we start? with music because that's what we both have in common yeah okay so you presumably do you know me from music no i know you from tattoos and and nuts and Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's uh, that circle so we're still talking even because of that even because of that and kipper kipper oh kipper yeah I have nothing to say about Kipper in any kind of good or bad light, owing to the fact that I just don't know him. But he's very big. He's enormous. And, and he, he talks his mind. attituded. Yeah. 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 He talks his mind. Right. I like so it. you're... It's, it's music. You cousin as well with nuts, are you? Or? No, I've no, no... I've got a very small immediate family here, but I'm from Anglesey in Wales, so... Right. So you're from, you're from where the weather comes from. Yes. That's yeah. cool. And they stamped me when I left. <laughs> Yeah, you don't have to pay to get out, though, do you? you, you you've got to come back. You've got to pay to get in now, either. I think. Have you I've not polished that as well? Yeah. The last. Yeah, time, they're letting you over. The last time I went, we went to the Patriots Clubhouse um, to play a gig. They've got a really brilliant venue, um, and it's in Welsh Wales. So not, you know not West I'm, England. No, not Wales. Swad, Swansea. Yeah, no, no. You're in oh, Wales. In Wales. Right, you have to drive over hills and all that with yeah, the yeah. sheep everywhere. That's proper wow. Right, and we went there and we were looked after so well. None of us wanted to leave, nah, and basically so. we didn't. Uh, we the next gig we had, we we basically drove from there, hired somebody to drive us because we were all too drunk, <laughs> and then we went on to the next gig. So Wales and I have an affinity. Well, they got the bad rap. Wales. Oh, we go there. They, they won't talk English if somebody's in, if somebody is English. Walks into a pub, everyone speaks Welsh. That's, that's, that's bollocks. Yeah, I, I've it, not it's, found it's that. Absolute bollocks. I'll tell you what did happen once. We, um, I went to stay in like what was advertised as a log cabin. Yeah. Right, this was a porter cabin yeah. with wood drawings on the side. That's it. Right? It's a log it, cabin. it was very comfortable. <laughs> and then I, t- I had an opal manta. Yeah, okay. lovely. A black thing. And we went down. A new shape one or a proper a old one? A proper old one. With a little silver manta on the wheel. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I, it was... Round back lights. Right, yes. Yeah. So it. that's why I bought it. Yeah. Because it, it had... Because Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. My penchant for Americanisms. Yeah. Mm. But I... So we went to this pub and uh, we drove down in and then I stood at the bar for ages and nobody, stood, nobody talked to me, no one served me, no one did anything. So I thought... This is a bit weird. I've heard about this, right? And then, then I just um, I did something despicable, and it was despicable. I had quite a lot of money on me at the time because I was doing a business deal, a legitimate business deal. I hasten yeah. to add, we In were renting Wales. out. We're, yeah, well, we were renting out motorcycles at the time, so I was going to buy some bikes. And then, so I went on there, took my money out, put it on the put it on the bar, and like a typical English dick, said, "How many people do I have to buy a drink so I can have one?" And the barman said, "Well, now you said that you can buy one for everyone. You get." And then I did, right? And there was only 12 people. We had the best flipping time. Okay. We had the best dinner. We had the best lunch, right? We stayed there all evening. They invited us back and then found out I was a musician and my, my person I was with at the time was a musician as well. We went down there and we had a jam night that night, staying in this porter cabin. We had a fantastic time. And the only negative thing, the only reason he didn't serve me is because he didn't know I was there. It wasn't, oh, it? It, it was uh, just like, uh, I just didn't see you, it. it you, yeah, you read into that one. Yeah, that was that was my baggage. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so 
you have been a bass player in bands for years. Years. I bought my first bass with my paper round money. Right. And I and and it was like a quid a week or something, but I was buying it out of a, a friend of mine's mum's catalogue. Catalog. Oh, hallelujah. And it was, a, I think it was a Littlewoods catalogue or something. It was a, I might be getting mixed up because it might have been a K's catalogue, but I know it was a K short reach bass. Right. Thin, skinny little thing. I would not a clue what to do with it, but I knew I wanted to be a bass player. Okay. The, the bass line's in the police, the bass line's in yep. a massive Tubai Army fan. Yeah. And uh, and a punk, heavy, heavy, good, chunky stranglers. Yeah, yeah. Man, I, I wanted to... Anything other than golden brown. Yeah, a, a, absolutely. <laughs> 110%. <laughs> and uh, so this bass, this bass arrived in a cardboard box and I was like, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. And it was about 45 quid or something. It was an enormous amount of money. Yeah. Back in 1970-something, maybe. And uh, I got it out of the box and then realised I'm not a clue what to do with it. Right. Not a clue. Asked a cut, and I think it was my stepbrother at the time. He knew somebody that was in a band, and I said, "Any chance you can hook me up with this geezer?" And he said, "Well, he's a guitarist, but anyway, he did hook me up, and he was in a band called Vicious Hamsters." Excellent. I think they were pretty local. I think they were a well-in band, Vicious Hamsters, right, or somewhere in certainly Hertfordshire. Rings. Does it? Yeah, know. I know. I know. Well, I know. Well, I've always remembered it, Vicious Hamsters. But, but, but. And and this guy come round and he had a bit of a quiff thing going on and he was quite a cool dude and he said to me what 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 do you what do you want to do and I said oh, well, I want to learn bass it's, and he said well you need to know how to tune it first you need to know this that, and the other. he said and I had a couple of hours with him I learned how to tune it and he said basically if you can pick stuff up by ear as long as your bass is in tune and you just keep I'm doing that because I'm putting a, a re- I'm putting a needle <laughs> up, going backwards and forwards on a, on a little, little record player like that forty five RPM and I just, just used to try and just pick. Pick out where the notes were. I think I think that's that's well, I was 14. definitely how we all did it. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and and but this two hours that this guy spent with me, God bless him, wherever he is and whatever mm. he's doing now, set me proper on the right track. Just mm. and he said to me, it's going to be boring as hell. It's boring as hell to to do whatever to do whatever. And um and that, and that's 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 where that that's came where from. it started. Yeah. So what? Right, so just the just the love of the music itself. That's yeah, what that's absolutely. what made you in. Absolutely. What punk, punk punk only eat, sleep and breathe. I can see that. I mean we, we both grew up you are a little older than me, but not I'm a lot. Fifty two Sunday. Right. Oh blimey. Happy birthday. Yeah. I'm forty five now. Oh I've got so, pants older than you. Yeah, yeah well yeah. <laughs> it's the oldest I've ever been though. Is it? But Wait, the thing you... is, right, is that uh, the punk I was aware of the punk movement. Yeah. Right? And gave it the disdain that it wanted. Yeah. Um, and you know friends of mine are so hard into The Clash and Joe Strummer and all yeah. of that and I understand Joe Strummer and what he, well I like to think I did as much as anyone can but the Sex Pistols I always laughed at thinking what's the point of that because I was a dick in those days I was thinking I'm a purist I'm a musician I want to play this and yeah. I didn't get it now I'm 45 it makes sense doesn't it now it all fits into place I am getting to be a and it was perfectly man. established yeah it was that was amazing and to be honest we've been I've been on a complete punk path my whole life yeah so I haven't I. played any kind of establishment game my whole life not that you know I haven't you know I'm not a bad boy but I'm just saying you know yeah well <laughs> um, we've done things in our past that maybe we shouldn't have but you know yeah. the music was what drove me through the whole thing now I then grew up in the hair bear bunch days, you know, when you know Bon Jovi and all that, all that. Yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. always had the Motley Crue link. More well, because that was a massive link. More the because the of the punk. And, yeah. More because of who they were, what they did, and how they did it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. they did it by themselves. Like you know, when they first did it, you know, there's all this thing, you know, that but the dirt they're making into a film now, which is great. But when you got their albums. Like back when it, albums were a thing, and you looked at who they thanked and what they said and, and why, because you wanted to know what they were doing, who yeah, they were yeah, speaking yeah. to, and That's why. Right. Yeah, and that always I drove me. Constantly read them back. Yeah. yeah, I still, I still do. I still buy everything I can on CD, right? Simply because I love that taking it out. Vinyl wasn't so much for me because CDs came in. Tapes. My first tape was flipping Ugly Kid Joe, I think, like some terrible, horrible thing like that that we brought in. But CDs were the massive thing when I started collecting music. Yeah, I was still a vinyl. My first ever, ever single was um, King Rocker, Generation right. X. Yeah. Oh. And I got it from... Billy. Our Price in Welling Garden. Mm. 
and I think it was 90p. 90p, even then 90p. Yeah, and um, yeah, it was 90p. It had I I bought that, and the week the following week I bought. I do remember it distinctly because I'd I'd managed to cut some jeans up and s- right. stitch some zips in. Yeah. I'd nicked out my mum's sewing basket. <laughs> And there's another story for that, which is a corker. I'll tell you in a minute about <laughs> about being a punk rocker in the in the in the very very early eighties. Right. And uh, and I'd I'd gone it. I'd got the G four into town. Right. From Pangzanga. I was a Welling punk. I was a Welling punk. I knew all the Welling. I hung around with all of the Welling punk. I'm I'm proud to say I was a I was an original Welling Garden punk rocker. Oh, Absolutely. Absolutely. Aubrey Wood, Katrina, Nap, all the all Keith Nap. Savage Drax, Simon Smithers, yeah. and uh, all of us. We were all. That's what I'm really, really proud of being that. But I remember getting on the bus, and then mashing my hair up because I couldn't leave the house because my no. mum was my mum was pretty strict. Yeah, and uh, getting on the bus and going over town. And I bought the following week. I bought um, Bombers Tube by Army. Yeah, which had a kick-ass bass line in it, and it took. I, actually, I don't even think I ever finished learning it. <laughs> Probably might take me a bit longer to pick it up now, but um, kick-ass bass line. And it was about it was about the music mm. and about the, the punk rock scene in Welling then, because Welling Hatfield, uh, quite a big chunk of Haldens, I suppose, is still Welling and Pangzanger. Yeah, there, there was there was quite a big punk mini movement. Yeah. And uh, all skateboards, all punks. It was all because uh, I think there was quite there was quite a few skinheads knocking about. There. I think Mark Fallon and well, there was a few skinheads. My God, Mark Fallon. Mark Fallon. That's a name I haven't heard in yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. Pangzanga boy, Gordon Raffert. He was another punk that mm. who took me to my first ever Vice Squad gig. Right. Snuck me into the Hundred Club, and at the, <laughs> and I'm thinking, geez, I've got to get home. And he's like, oh, you stay at my house. You stay at my house tonight. And and this is we jumped the trains into London. Yeah. And he said, we've got to stay till after the gig. And I'm like, oh, God getting a bit tired or whatever we, I mean we'd snuck some stuff in there and whatever yeah. but um, I was I was young well we were young and I said why have we got to stay till after the gig he said because we'll, we'll go around the floor and pick up all the badges yeah yeah and all the studs that have fallen off people's jacket That's and we'd go we'd, I'd go and with pocketfuls of yeah. pyramid studs and start and make my own belts with all the shit that you get off the floor of the, yeah. of the 100 club I mean, there'd be other stuff you'd be putting yeah. your hands in, but it'd be worth it just to get a crass. <laughs> it was badge. a good halt, yeah. yeah or, or, or you're like, oh, result, yeah, result. And you're looking for you're looking for that import, the punk import stuff, like from the big smoke who come in, someone who's been to that there, London, who's gone to all the gigs yeah. on the other well, side. With one the good of the guy, one of the punks from Harpenden, he had two black Mohicans, and he drove a Pontiac Firebird. Right. This was how cool this geezer yeah. was. Was like. What I mean, he was a, obviously he was a face and uh, St Albans happened a lot, and um, and was was on the wall outside Kentucky and Welling yep. chips and gravy dip or whatever um, bag or whatever out of fine fare and the uh, he he I was ta- I was talking to him and I, I'm I but looking up to him I mean this geezer was so cool it was yeah. so cool and I'm thinking I really want to be I want two black Mohicans I want I, I want your motor were, and they I want were it now. awesome and his car just went, <laughs> And uh, and I said I'm I'm really trying to save up. I want to get a, I want to get a pyramid stud belt. I'm really trying to save up. And he went, dude. And he gave me his belt. No way. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know. I, I must have asked licked him about something. I don't know. But the geezer was so cool. And sometimes though, sometimes it's just about him seeing the fire in your eyes for something that yeah, he takes for granted. Yeah, I don't know. What, I think that genuinely what it was. And I was like, I'd so. He must have smelt something about mm. the fact that how cool I wanted to be and how. I wanted that. That that was that to me. That pyramid belt. I think they were dollar. They were serious money, mm. and uh, and it was really heavy and a chunky belt. I had to take about six rows of studs out of it because I was only five foot. Well, I'm only five foot. Whatever now. Yeah. And um and and I had that. Yeah, I treasured that belt. That I treasured it uh, as a as a as a gift. And I think his name was Chris, but mm. I don't know. We're going back a long way, and I've, I've done quite a few things since then. <laughs> We've both but had a cool drink stories, since those days. And my mum, I was on I was on the wall at Kentucky and I had a car pull up behind us. And I think I was supposed to be pushing trolleys at Fine Fair, I don't right. know, because that was where I was getting my dollar from. Right. And uh, still at school, obviously. Yep. And my mum, I felt a grab on the back of my jacket and my mum dragged me back into the car screaming, you're supposed to be at work in front of all my mates. Oh no! 
threw me in the car and took me home. And then when she got home, she went even banzai about the fact that she'd gone to a brownie picnic on the on the Sunday morning, and she'd got a tartan blanket out the back of the car Uh-oh. to sit on it, and there was a big circle missing out the middle of her tartan blanket. Well, I, I chopped yeah. that and folded it over the back of my bum flap belt. Because I wanted a tartan... I'd, I'd seen that. Yeah. Well, that was really cool. I want a tartan bum flap. I, I, I Who doesn't want that? Flap. I know where there's some tartan. But, I mean, I chopped it out, folded it all back. I thought she was going to use that blanket, put it back in the car. And then the brownies and came out, snuck up yeah, behind her. Yeah, and she's gone, hang on a minute, it's a big hole bit out of her. That's, that's the other cool punk story of my days, that one. <laughs> but uh, she never got it back. So, bless her. She never got it back? No. Did you did you not even just go? I probably still got one, it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you you've gone through that. You've idolised a few people. What what's the first band? What when did you play in front of people? Uh, I was in a band called Secondhand News, mm-hmm. and um, it was a bit of a funny time because I'd had to I've had I had to flog my equipment, to sort some stuff out, and then hocked another load of equipment on the whatever, whatever, dirty, great, big Womba 15 mm. combi, which I couldn't drag anywhere. No. It was always a shopping trolley, everything went in a shopping trolley. But I was in a band called Secondhand News, and there was a few people you might know in that, Beamish, Sean Jeffries. Uh, he was a drummer. Mm. There was a guy called Jeff West, Hatfield Punk. Yeah. Uh, Westy, he was guitarist. Paul Margrove, Margie, he that rings was a bell, but lead I don't guitar, know why. and I was on bass. Right, and it was, it was fucking it's a mess, a horrible mess. <laughs> yeah, but hell, we were all good. Yeah, individually, we were amazing. But I used to have to get Jeff to show me stuff because every, every week, I'd, do, I'd, I can't remember what I'm playing. Yeah, I and, and he'd go, <laughs> and I'd shout at people because they're like nothing would work, and he's like, you haven't even plugged it in, dude. You're like, oh, I'm like, oh well. well. <laughs> I had to, uh, I haven't played a lot of instruments in front of people. I used to be a drummer. That's how I started. Yeah, yeah. And then I realised that my ego wouldn't let me sit at the back anymore. Um, <laughs> so I came to the front to be a singer. And I've been a classically trained singer as a child, like a, in Wells Cathedral in Somerset where yeah. I grew up. And it's like, oh, kill me. Well, I'm Welsh. I was supposed to sing. Well, that's it. <laughs> that's it. But you didn't. You played bass. But yeah. weirdly, I um, I came up through and I've always been a singer with different bands, but always wanted to play guitar or play you know something so uh there was a band i was in called perfect distortion which did quite well we we did a few things and uh i was at the height of my um my drug abuse as it as it were and so basically i was convinced i could do anything the sad thing was i actually could do this so i picked up i bought an ibanez bass ibanez four string bass like heavy pickups light gauge strings did that thought about it all took rob uh rob oh, clydesdale do you know Rob? No. Um, he, local, local, like virtuoso, if you like, who I did Perfect Distortion with, um, he was in a band called 3D Echo, which you might have seen around Harlow and all that, but again, we've all had a drink. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we went into Hartford Guitars or whatever, Hartford Music, and then I just said, right, that's the one. We took it to the studio. We stayed there for seven days, like just went home at night, came straight back, yeah, yeah, yeah. wrote, produced, recorded did the whole thing i wrote all the lyrics all the bass lines and then uh, rob i would then pass out at some stage <laughs> rob would then mix it all down do all that and then we, we got some weird guy called fox something fox as a manager who used to work for emi and then sold all his back catalog for millions and he was a complete pompous tosser but we thought we'd arrive we did the whole usually thing. are yeah and then loads of those and then that all went tit but we had this one moment where i suddenly realized i can play this thing because I taught myself guitar, you know, chords, just yeah, to write with. so did I. Did that, you know, so I did it. And then I suddenly, everything fell into place when I picked up the bass guitar. Everything. It's like, oh, okay, you're a rhythm section, so being a drummer. Yeah, mate. Right? You can do that. I can relate to banging on something to make the noise. <laughs> yeah, mate. Yeah? So we've been doing that for years with different women and, and bass guitars and all kinds of things. But now, you know, now, so that was what? That was 12 years ago? Right, um, yeah. That band. So that was very late in my musical career. But that's what now, if I play anything, I play my bass. Yeah, mate. It's the way it has to be. It's, I it's funny because I put a post up today. Well, you I know, it. I saw it. And I, and I thought, I, 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 was in, I was in the van. I don't know what was on. 
think it was Bon Jovi or something came on. Mm. Bom, 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 bom. And I'm like, kick it off bass line. I thought, Jesus, I haven't picked up my bass for months. Yeah. Not since the last Smash gig. So since, what since, was that your do you not play now then? You're not no, playing I've, anymore. I uh it it was going absolutely garrity. Early early nineties were in a band called Colour Ride. Mm-hmm. Which got quite a, quite some um Natar was we were quite well known. <laughs> but we were hitting along the same side of Smash. We came with Smash, we gigged with Smash. Smash then slightly got slightly heavier and slightly better. Mm-hmm. And then were a lot harder working. Right. A lot harder working. Um, I had a, a reasonably young or very young family mm. at that point. And I think I was the only the only punk in a mod band ever because there was this new mod thing. There was this thing in the very, very early 90s, 90, 91. And um, Paul Weller led. Very. We were actually based at Nomis Studios in Kensington nah, yeah. you know, with, yeah, with Paul is. Weller's old man. Yeah. And the guy that took us under his wing was a guy called David Edwards, who signed Duran Duran. Yeah. He signed Bow Wow Wow. He signed. He's responsible for root, 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 reflex. Oh. Don't ask me that. Why? <laughs> why? But one of the tracks that we were recording and rehearsing at the studios, he said to us, why don't you. Instead of just singing happy, why don't you sing ha- ha- happy? And and the, the, one of the one of our really cool tunes was actually we, we took that on board. He likes and the stutter step. He then. did like the stutters, yeah, bless him. And then um, and then there was a bit of a bit of a row within within we've with banned and him. I, I could go into detail, but I'm not going to. But um, <laughs> but two of us looked really cool. One of us looked cool, but was mildly on the large side and that seemed to peeve Mr Edwards off and said look I've got to sell you you have got to sell you lot and he said music's great you play great you look kind of great but we could do with possibly losing a little bit more losing the fat bloke I've got you know I've been there and it went it went belly yeah basically it was fuck it yeah, you this can't. is this is you know it's about the music and it's yeah. about and this that, so it did it, it went a little tits yeah went a little tits for that so um, although we carried on the actual fact that our record label was falling away mm. it was uh, the gigs were getting less my family was getting busier yep and then I backed out after a little while with that and said I'm gonna actually do some family stuff and crack on with what I've got to do at home. I was probably doing a little bit too much um, of most things. Yeah. I was down to about eight stone, I think, at one point. I mean, we had some really cool gigs. We played with Radiohead and Dodgy and... Yeah. Quite, we had some really cool gigs, but it was it, it was definitely taking its toll. Sometimes there is a point where you have to realise that enough's enough. And, I, and I am one of those people, luckily, I am one of those people that can say, I, I actually, I need to knock that on the head. Yeah. Um... Um, uh, uh, the only thing I'm mildly addicted to is sugar and roll-ups. Yeah, everything. Which, I've, know, I've, I haven't touched alcohol for ten years. Mm-hmm. I actually saw. I saw that the other day. Not that I was stalking you. You understand? No. <laughs> I saw. So you posted something, and someone said, "Have you been drinking?" And you, and you said, "Well, not for ten years." Uh, yeah. And I thought, oh, uh, all right. I am. Um, I always was a drinker to the point because I liked it but it wasn't to the I need to drink to become a vomiting mass in the corner yeah no same, so same. I had a great time um, the coke was always about um, getting rid of my insecurities so going back to that fat bloke in the room right yeah. I was the leader of every band that I've been in because I'm an arrogant fucker right but also I was quite good at what I did so you know we did that but also I was a large I mean I used to be 23 stone when I was doing perfect stone. I had a tyre around my head Right, you know, I was a large man, and I still am. So now, to me, I'm 18 stone three. Now I'm skinny. This is the smallest I've ever been for years. Yeah, yeah. So it's like when you're, and I know what that's like. And I, I did have a producer who was also a manager say to me, "Well, you know, people will look at you and judge you." And I said, "Well," and I said, "Well, yeah, but fuck off." Well, this <laughs> is it. Do you know what I mean? Well, it's like we need to sell a product. I just said to him, "I said to him, you," and we're like, "That's it." I just said, "Can I sing or not?" And he said, "Am I wasting my time with that?" He said, "No, no, no, it's all great." And I'm like, "Right." So what's the problem? There was plenty of them out there. I think. I think. 
Alison Moyet got thrown into the argument, I think. Yeah. Um, what's the other fat fella that's done nothing but one album and lived his whole life off of it? Meatloaf? Meatloaf, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> yeah, bad Somebody want scooter. to explain any of that to me? Yeah. Also, Meatloaf was a huge mammal when he started. Yeah. And then, then had liposuction, weirdly, in his 50s because he was going to die. But, you know. He should have sucked his album with him. Yeah, that second <laughs> bat out of hell, too. That should have been called The Confusion. Or why did you do that? Anyway, who cares? Anyway, that's okay, a, that's for another episode. Another episode of, <laughs> of we'll the Jim and Simon show. <laughs> right, so I want to know about motorcycles. Yeah, why not? Now, I knew that you used to be, or, or yeah, a Ducati yeah, I'm mechanic. A, I'm a factory trained to carry yeah. technician. Yeah. Now, I know this because friends of mine who had Ducati Monsters and uh, 916s or whatever yeah, they were, yeah, yeah. Yeah, would come to you. Yes. And they would sing you off praises. That's lucky. And yeah, because, and I only, this only fell into Pat, and I thought, I do bloody know you. Like when it's because everyone says, of course you know someone, you're a musician, blah, 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 you marquee club, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, but yeah, all right. But then, so we've lived in kind of spheres for a few years, yeah. but actually not really no. met. So that's why I thought I'd throw you under the bus on the radio, as it were, yeah, and we'd yeah. see where we were. <laughs> come but, up and have a chat. Come up and have a chat. But yeah, so I knew of you in that way. Yeah. Um, because for the Ducati, so what, how, where did that start? Where did the motorcycle start? <laughs> in years ago. A million years uh, ago. Hey, I give you a hit on my first ride. It was a, a green putsch free speed. Yes. And uh, I was still at school. I had a putsch maxi. And, uh, yeah, putsch maxi. Yeah. Well, this was the one prior to that that had a free speed on the handlebar. Oh, we had no speeds. You were lucky. With pedals. Oh, yeah, uh, pedals. Maxi had pedals, yeah. Yeah. I was quite... A, and um, it was... I. When we moved from Wales, we moved to a pub in Welling Garden called the Pear Tree Pub. Mm. And my dad was a landlord there for 11 years. Right. And in the time that when you're a landlord, people leave stuff in the car park, or there's a dodgy <laughs> deal about this, that, and the other. Look, lend us 50 quid, I'll give him a moped, or whatever it was that my old man had got. And anything under the bar <laughs> was under the bar. Big yeah. big pub, angry little Welsh fella. Lovely. Yeah. A poison dwarf, I used to call it. <laughs> Well, I, I, I don't know, what was I, 12 or something like that, and, and my dad said, oh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a motorbike in the garage if you want it. I was like, yeah, I'll have it. I was mad on bikes anyway, just, mm. just, Barry Sheen, whatever, whatever, yeah. whatever. I was still mad on bikes. Dad was a biker. My Uncle Bob was a biker. Look, that's another story. That's a definite <laughs> another episode. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to revisit all of this, you yeah, know that. This is going to be a series. Yeah, yeah, I'm up for that. And uh, anyway, blah, 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 blah. I opened the garage door and there was this manky little putsch thing and I thought I don't really know what I'm doing with it but I'm typical I'll get, I'm going to get my hands on it and fathom out how it works yeah. afterwards exactly the same as bass guitar exactly the same as anything else that's the way it has to be if you don't if you don't have the balls to go I'm going to take that part that's and then I'm going to put it back together I did that with a hoover as well yeah I did mm. it with a hoover but I, I learned the mistake because I lost my nail when I was a kid, because I thought, how does a hoover work? And I fired it up and I stuffed my hand underneath yeah. it and it ripped my nail off. Uh, are you going to know how that works then? But yeah, now I knew how it worked. <laughs> it was, <laughs> of course I knew how it worked. Oh, yeah. And I knew it was belt driven because the belt snapped as well while my finger was in it. Yeah. So I mean, that was, so I was a life It's lesson. educational, it's a yeah. beautiful thing. Yeah. Learning I, as you live. I could have gone and actually gone to work for Hoover. Yeah, I, you could have done. But Not quite as exciting enough. as you can, no. I do, but. <laughs> So I had this Putsch Free Speed, took it apart, actually managed to get it running, knew that it, found out that it needed two-stroke oil, blah, 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 blah. Had it for ages. Used to ride it to school. Uh, and then somewhere along the line, a CB404 no. arrived oh, in the hello, garage. Yeah. And my dad's like, you can't touch the floor, you're not having it. But he said, it doesn't go anyway. I said, if I get it going, can I have it? He said, no, you can't, you're, you're four foot feckle. And it's a big old Honda, this CB404. And I'm, I was like, well, if I can get it going, can I have it? I was spoiled, sport rotten. Yeah. We, we, were, we were back home, my, my aunties and uncles used to say he was, that my dad was the, 
the, the, the poor boy gone rich. He's gone hunting for money. Right. He's left Anglesey. He's left the island. He's left the pilot boat community that we grew up in. Yeah. Bringing the boats in off Hollyhead. He's gone off to find his things, and um, he was a little bit of a little bit of a black sheep in that front. But so we had money, and he was a landlord of a fucking big pub. Yeah. So we had we had dollar, but it it wasn't. I was spoiled. So yeah. I stamped my feet and said, "If I can get this bike going," he said, "It doesn't go. It doesn't run. You can't. You're not having it." And uh, and I thought bollocks to that. I'm having it. I'm having it. <laughs> so I was down in the garage and and I fathomed it out. Worked out why it weren't working. Worked out, and in the end, I used a, a mini starter solenoid. Right. To get it to get it to fire. Didn't have a kickstart on it, so it was a, like a dodgy old battery charger. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I was 13, 14. So it was like it was it was. Well, the only reason you managed to do that is because reality didn't kick in. That's not safe. Who gives a shit? Oh, no, that, that's throughout my whole life. That's not safe, is it really? Have you seen the drag racing yes. episode? Yes, I I'm have. 51 years old. Just. That's never kicked in. I've broken everything. Okay, for anyone who doesn't know you, you've built a drag bike uh, yeah. from the ground up yeah. for charity. For charity, And yeah. then rode it. Uh, got rained off once, it but did. then but then rode it at centre... Uh, what's it called? Santa, Santa Pod, Pods, Centre yeah. Parks. Santa, really? I could, I could ride it there. Ooh, you could ride it through the whole Williams. We'll, we'll get to that. Right, so... We'll, we'll cross that bridge in a minute. So the 404, did you get it? Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I got it running. And yeah. I, I ran upstairs and, and um, the back metal fire escape up into the kitchen when my dad was having a sign. I said, it's running, it's running. He said, I can hear it. <laughs> and I remember seeing it. He said, I can hear it. And I said, it's running, so can I have it? And he went, no, I said, you couldn't have it. And I said, I said, if I could get it running... And he's like, you know, you don't, you don't get it. Yeah. I said, well, it's mine anyway. And I, I used that to go to school. <laughs> yes, because you would, wouldn't but you? I'd, but I'd park, I went to Howard School in Welling Garden. Right. And I and I parked it at the back, just lent it in the hedge, and I had a little cork lined. <laughs> you know the leather, you know the leather bits yeah. with a white peak. Yeah. I I nicked it from somewhere. I don't know. Where I'd found it. I don't know. I don't know. And I stuffed that under the hedge, put me ten JPS down in front of me pants. Yeah. Went into school back in days. <laughs> it, it got nicked oh no it got nicked uh, but I was still left with a pooch which came with us to Pangzanga when we moved out of the pub right so but that's that's the start of it and then it, it, it barrel rolls on the, there was a uh, a guy I know that was working at a bike shop in Hatfield and he said we've had wind there's going to be a Ducati dealership opening in Wedding Garden and I was like man that's at the time that's I was doing a load of stuff with ZXR Kawasaki's and yeah, I said I've I've only glanced on a few Ducatis, but what a dream! The eight five one was, mm. and and it was uh, all the the nine hundred SS is the early stuff. Mark Howard, all the guys that I'd watched on these Ducatis are pretty much untouchable. These bikes because they're hand built, they're Italian, they're and and, and I said Mike his name. I said, said, give me a job there, and he said, well, I'll give it a go. And about a week later, I got a phone call on the house phone. Do you remember those? Yes. <laughs> Hello, the telling bone. Data before five two. Yeah, that's it. And uh, without the lock on, obviously, I didn't yeah. have to tap it because yeah. it was my phone. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, I, and uh, he said, "Come down, come down to." Gave me the address. I had to go to a place in Milton Keynes called Moto Cinelli. Yeah. And I drove drove to Milton Keynes on my ZXR Street Fighter thing and I uh, met this guy called Jeff Green and he said look what do you know about Ducatis I said nothing I said but I will absorb yeah. I will absorb Ducatis. I will learn I everything am a, I'm a sponge <laughs> and uh, and he said well, start Monday so I was there for about a week and I mean I mean I rode my first uh, second day there I PDI'd a brand new bike and I'd, out of the crate it was a 748 SP or whatever it was I don't know but it was yeah. the Hyper sport to have and hell, hell, different, mate, what different, a bike. World. <laughs> what a bike, what a bike. And then a week after that, they bang, bang you to, to Italy. You, you you trained in Italy and they fly you out there. Yep. You're there for four or five days at a hit, fly you back, hotel, whatever, whatever. And that happens constantly throughout your training at Decay, which you can say that all my certificates are factory produced and I am a factory trained not not to date now we're, we're going back you, you give me a new Ducati now I've had it yeah it's only nuts and bolts but I mean I haven't got a laptop to run it because you need a laptop yeah to run everything, everything's so. computers now isn't it but um, yeah I'll eat, <coughs> you can actually show me a actually I will challenge anybody you can show me a bolt 
from any any Ducati Hypersport, and I will tell you exactly where that bolt goes. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, exactly, exactly yeah. where that bolt. So, what? How do you go from right? How do you go from Italian trained Ducati brain mm. to Mint Customs, <laughs> your own bikes, cutting up other things to make new, better things. The cutting up things is is we have to go way back to the push free speed, right? Um, because it was didn't like the mud guards, back them off. Um, did it, it was I wanted it to look a little bit different. So right from that early days, I knew that anything that was pulled out of a factory, I, I didn't I didn't like it in its stock okay. form. And as far as I'm concerned, when you have a motorcycle, it's it's a it's a living thing. Yep. And when that living thing comes to you. You've that got to is your, your living thing. You need to make it part of you, and it was, and it was. Well, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. And that that goes right back. But push bikes were like that the same. Mm. My, my push bikes that I had, um, uh, I built chop. I had corn handlebars on this push bike that had a chopper. Well, I think it was a rally grifter yeah. rear wheel in it, and it was stuck in third gear. When it could, oh, it was a and with the cow horns, but it looked cool. Yeah, and it's mine. I built it. So it, it, forever, aesthetic. forever. So then it went from from that. Even while I was at all prior to Ducati, I was building fighters. I was building mad stuff, getting stuff running, flogging it, mm. built, turning motocross bikes into road legal bikes, which wasn't done then. Mm. RM two fifties and stuff. Yeah. I'd put light kits on them. But I mean, this is years and years ago. We're talking yeah. eight, eight, late eighties, and I'm I'm bolting light kits on dirt bikes just to just to get them on the road, yeah. drag them around. But yeah. that so that throughout my whole life. The, mm. the custom thing has happened. Mm. Mint Customs came about. Um, I I got more more and more into because I started racing bikes very early on as well. So not just the street racing, the club racing, and then from that it got into the fact where I needed to know how suspension worked, how chassis worked, right, and how the telemetry worked on a bike. So I got really heavily involved with that and ended up um, actually. It was a it was a, a superbike team that I, I was approached by and said while I was racing, you know about suspension. We got some hassle with some front forks and stuff and stuff. And I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, I'll come and have a look for you. And I from they said, well, do you want to come and work for us? So it was about, and I said, well, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do next season. So then I had 14 odd years of bumming about in the British superbike paddock. Right. But as well as my racing, as well as Sam's racing and the Tom, both the younger boys who were motocross as well. So yep. it was like, um, so that's that started that ball rolling within how I was working with telemetry, building frames, setting swing arms up, stiffening swing arms. So full under uh, underneering, what? Yeah, full underneering. understanding of engineering so, to the point where you know what's going to happen when you change the rake on your. On, oh, yeah, you know, and you yeah. Know what's I, I, happen can, with it. I can. I have a three D. <coughs> A 3D image in the bike. If a rider comes to me and says, "I've got it's doing this, it's tucking, or um, I've got head shake, or it's squatting," and I, I can build a 3D image in my head of how that bike's behaving, right? And alter it and put it right. Make the problem go preload, right. whether it's heavier springs, whether it's rebound compression yeah. damping, wh wh whatever. I can see what's happening. And being a racer at the time and an ex-racer now, mm. I I know I know paddock hill bend. I know. Graham Hill, I know mm. quorums, I know. And they say, oh, it's doing this, that, this, that, and the other as I'm going into court. I said, well, just come about foot out and you'll miss that little ripple and then it won't upset it. I'm not going to set a bike up for one ripple. And they're like, mm. oh, you know the little ripple up there? Mate, yeah, of course, <laughs> of course I do. I've done a million laps around this place. I know. And that's what that's what was good about doing yeah. setups for because then yeah I mean you know what you're talking about because you've done it luckily you've walked in you know you've walked a mile in their shoes and then you know and then you can give on that so now you have how does it work what's your process when somebody comes to you is it usually donor bike yeah absolutely right so they come to your donor bike you yeah. look at that and then you go I know where this is going or yeah. does it it, it does might it, not even get to me does it retake it might even be the message what donor bike have you got this take it away yeah I, I know you can't do that with that. Mm. You can't make that out of that. Right. That doesn't matter how good I am mm. or how good anybody is, that ain't going to go into that. Yep. You ain't going to make a Mini into a Ferrari. No. Um, but you can make something look 
similar, but certainly not that, and will not work. And they're like, all oh, well, I want to do, I want to put this motor in that. Well, that's not going to work. It's water cooled. You want to blah blah blah. That looks stupid. Mm. And who, who wants a bobber with a dirty great radiator and a? It, it's it's it. I mean, they might want it, but I ain't building it. Yeah. So it, that's the key, is it? So if if someone comes to you and says, "I want this, this, and this." And you're like, well, no, that's, that doesn't work. What happens? Do they then go away with the ump or do you work it out? Or yeah, what's the deal? Some some go away with the ump. Some say, well, is my money not good enough? His money's brilliant. I'm not, I'm not being an arsehole. One thing I'm not, I'll just clear this up. I'm not an arsehole. Right. Um, but I'm quite truthful. Yeah. And I'd say you'd, you'd get laughed at. But also, you cannot make a sow's ear, put right. it out in the marketplace, put mint customs on it, That's the other thing, and yeah. expect people to go, bloody hell, you're great at this, because you'll be going, no, that's a piece of shit, and I did it for the money. <laughs> yeah, I know. And, and I'm not doing it for the money. I haven't got a Porsche in outside, I've got a bad old van. Mate, I drive a flipping tiny wheelie Renault Kango van, right, because it does what it needs to do. Not but interested in the money. It's I, I love money. Right, and I'll tell you now, but, right, we live hand to mouth through the tattoo shop. I build, um, I build furniture, um, industrial furniture. Yeah, it's this, beautiful. This stuff, it is beautiful. This, I built this table that we're on, right, out of boards that nobody could use for furniture. Right, it's all old scaffolds and it's split and it's absolutely it's mucked lovely. up, right? And the frames are all just crap. The welding, I didn't really, you know, the welding is what it is, but right. I thought- well, It right, can't work for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what what happened to me with this was is that I thought everything was magic. Everyone's heard this who listens to my show. So I went. At, I thought I can't do this. Can't do this. Age forty, I went. I'm gonna do this. Bought a welder, gasless. Right. Went. Yeah. Throw that away. Buy something in. Got the right people around me. Now I make industrial furniture for customers who love it. Yeah. Yeah. I love it and all. And I, you know, I'm in love with this stuff. This Not is that I bought any yet. Well, no. But <laughs> why would you? Yeah. But it's, <laughs> but it's my point being is I have a vision for these things this is for me to sit here and basically the whole point is it's made out of old reclaimed stuff because you know there's nothing fancy there's nothing flash but it works and it's back to base level so if which somebody is came to you with a bit is. of chipboard yeah and uh, and melamine Ikea uh, there are other sh- shops available <laughs> yeah. but uh, this and this bit of chipboard and go, can you make me something really cool out of this? No. But why? It's wood. And, and even if they say, this happened the other week, this happened but the other week. this is the same scenario. It's the same thing. We don't live in the same worlds, but they're always, there's always crossover. Definitely similar. Someone came to me and they said, uh, I, want to, I want your industrial frame with an MDF top, right? Because I'll do that. And I said, what's the point? And they went, well, um, that's what I want. And I said, that's fine. They said, I've got a budget of a thousand pounds. And I said, well, why would you do that? Right, because yes, I can make it, and yes, I can take your money, but then that money's got my name on it. Oh yeah. And I tell you this now, my wife will hear this and go, "You did what?" <laughs> right. <laughs> and then, but I said, "Why can I not make you something out of some? I'll get you brand new forty-seven mil thick wood. We'll get to size. We'll stain it up. We'll make it look like it's a million years old, but yeah. it will never leave your side." And went, that, but that's not what I want. And I said, "Well, you uh, and I, can't, you and I can't work together." And we shook hands, and it was all fine. But people do think if this they, is a bit of old chewing gum as well, or something. Oh, this it? it's all just that's as amazing. It was. I mean, actually, that that I think was a bit of molten plastic Great. that somebody had done it on. These these That'd boards. Have been better if it was chewing gum. I, I wish it had been. I shouldn't have changed that story. But yeah. <laughs> so as you can see, split completely. But then it's all smooth. It's all waxed. It's all burnt as well, and it fits on a self-made frame. It's cool. That stands. You know. And so I the, know, the, the, the chipboard thing won't work. The no. MDF thing won't work. So that's but why you know that. Yeah. But but, the, but I'm the customer. Mm. And, so, the, and the money is yes my missus will be listening to this as well probably yeah but sorry she, but, girls but she's amazing mm. because she says as long as you're happy it doesn't it doesn't matter no, if the bills exactly. are paid mm. and there's no grief mm. then, then it doesn't matter and I said well I want to build this the bikes I've got going on at the moment it's like mm, I haven't sold the last two yet right. well, aren't they supposed to be funding these oh, bills oh yes and, and and the last customer he Bolshed out, so it was like it was all big. It was all getting ready to go. The donor bike was going to get dropped off, and uh, and then that was like quiet and gone. So I'm like, right, okay, I'll get on with whatever else I've got to do. And she's like, haven't they got to be sold to fund? The-? No, but I do need a grand and mm. the savings. Yeah, because I've got I'll a bit of paint and powder coat. Oh yeah, I'll put it back. <laughs> I'll put it back. Yeah. 
put it back. And haven't you just completely kitted out a whole new workshop? No. Yes. Yeah. The trouble with doing it on YouTube, my old son, <laughs> is that not only can everyone see it, but everyone can see it. You can still hide things. <laughs> no, you can't, madam. We have. Oh no, you can't. No, yeah, you can't. Everything's out there. The thing, the thing about the thing that I've seen as well that I enjoy about Mint Customs. So on YouTube, look up Parry Brothers. Parry Brothers channel, yeah. Right, Parry Brothers channel, and you will find Mint Customs short like episodes. Two seasons now, right? Two seasons. I think there's eight or nine episodes nine, in each yeah. season. Now, what's basically what's happening? There's other is, stuff in there as well. It's pretty it's whack loads of other little quick yes. clips on or something. I love it. What's happening is, is I am watching somebody I can. I can put my hand up and say I know them yes, kind of yes, in can. a very tenuous link <laughs> but they're making motorcycles now I don't know if you know this about me but I have always the whole point of this whole furniture thing right was so I could one day build a motorcycle for myself right now I've got a bit waylaid right I got waylaid with some jewellery right that went horribly wrong right <laughs> then you know how it goes yeah. bright shiny things <laughs> yeah right? magpie then, yeah mm. then I got waylaid by this furniture stuff but I'm alright with that because I fucking love it. We know yes, that. And you're good at it. But it, thank you, sir. So what I'm thinking, you know, is is that when I can see somebody I can relate to with a passion, but actually yeah. doesn't just talk about it, goes and bloody does it. It's got, it's got to be. That's the important thing for me with the people around me is that, you know, Dave and I started Madhouse Tattoo with nothing. We That's had, cool, yeah. We had, thanks. We had nothing. We still have nothing, but we live hand to mouth. We paid our bills. We paid our kids. We paid, you know, everything that You're was needed. smiling at the end of the day. And, yeah, and we've, we just, Dave, bless him, has just had a hernia operation, so he's cut in half at the moment. So he's out there. So we've had three weeks dark. Right, but we're doing walk-ins with the apprentice who's just got licensed, and she's happy. So that's room for her to blossom. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. but these people around me have all got this passion to do what they do and do it well, and you know, and lucky enough. Yeah, because it's luck. It's luck as much as it is. You need to make your own future, not your not your fortune, because your no. fortune comes in many different guises. Mm. Your fortune is um, your home life. Whether you've got kids or not, mm. um, not ne not necessarily material goods. Even though I've got a garage full of custom-built Harley Davidsons, mm. <laughs> that's yeah, that's irrelevant. Yeah. It just doesn't that's completely, completely ignore irrelevant. that. But uh, but it, it but your fortune and self-well-being is got to be built on your passion mm. and what you love doing. If you can get out of that, if you can get out. If you're lucky enough to have a passion, mm. because some people haven't, some people don't. That's somebody criticised me the other day um, on the YouTube channel, but did it privately. And they said to me, they said to me, the problem with you is you have passion with all things. Some people can't find that passion. And I said, okay, that's an observation. So what's the criticism? And he said, well, you're you're talking about a life that some people can't live. And I said, yeah, but that's not my problem. Yeah, no, I'm not, not saying that I'm better than you. No, I'm not saying that I'm done. I've probably lived a harder life because of my stupid passions, right? Because <laughs> I needed to wade in. You know what I mean? So if I hadn't have been a passionate musician, yeah. I wouldn't have slept in bed sits and like and you know shared yeah. housing, which we had to break into when we were kids, because that's what you did. That is you know? exactly and right. It, you Strings. Know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The you know when you've got when you've got an ability to do something as well, that's not enough. You have to want to use that ability. Yeah, you do. So therefore, if you haven't got that ability, I couldn't weld. I couldn't weld my way out of paper bag. Didn't know anything about it. So I made sure that I put myself around people who would help me, yeah. who were friends, yeah. but also people who have become my friends since because they know that I'm not standing there talking about it. I've gone and done it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly and I think, right. you know, that's what I see with Mint Customs as well. You haven't talked about it. You're bloody doing it. Not only are you doing it, you're doing it on the telly kind of thing. <laughs> you know, because you, you got hooked up with Extreme Channel or something. We did, as yeah. Well. Yeah, we got hooked up with Extreme. We've also got um, a director's portal with um, um, one of the other telly channels. I can't what? remember. Sam's department. Explain director's portal. What does that oh, mean? Oh, they're, um, they're one of the TV companies give you a director's portal which means that you can showcase your stuff direct to, oh yeah to the tv executives so they want to see what you're doing I, uh, it's not dave i can't it, oh, i can't remember who it is i've got I'll, let me crush this really quickly mm. 
the the TV, the YouTube things, the thing, the Emma bag. It's not my bag. Mm. Um, it's Sam's passion. Yeah. And Sam, apart from being um, world class chassis technician for Olin's, mm. uh, Suzuki's apprentice of the year when he was back um, being a full time bike mechanic. Holy He's shit. a fully trained bike mechanic. Yeah. Um, and this film thing that he got a hold of wanting to do, I'm not 100% sure how he did it, but for me, it's about, it's not all about this this film thing, whereas Sam and Tom and Jack, the three, my three young'uns, it, it's the Parry brothers, that's 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 their thing. Yeah. So when um, some some people bid me going up the road if I'm in the van, I've got Mint Customs written on the van. Yeah. So people bid me and go, Ugh. and I walked into a shop, into a bike shop a few weeks ago, and the, and the guy in there said, you know, hey mate, I love your videos, and I'm like, thank you very much. That's really. That's I don't really know what cool. to say though. But I was in Southampton. Yeah. So I mean, you're like, but that it's that's really humbling to think that my boy's work yeah. has done that. Yeah. But for me, when the when I because they'll do loads of filming and they they always make me sit in a chair. Yeah. And they'll go right. What have you been up to? And I'll go, oh. Or, and he'll say, right, we need to we need to talk about this, we need to talk about this, we need to talk about this, can you talk about this? And I'm like, well, I can't remember any of that. So he had prompts me from the camera, and I'll say, is this going on the telly, YouTube? Yeah, you do say <laughs> that, you do say that, because I've seen it. Yeah, and, I, I'm, and, and he's like, yeah, just keep talking, and I'm like, oh, 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 and then I'll take a cut of that, I've, I've got... Let me finish welding that subframe up. I'll come back and do a bit more because you've caught me right in the middle of doing that or yeah. valve clearances or something. I don't know. I don't know. Mm. So I want to crush the fact that th- that's Sam's bag. Yeah. Not my bag. No. Alistair, who's the other co-founder member yep. of Mint, who's Alistair Latmer, um, he's excellently narcissistic. So he's brilliant. In so he camera. loves that. <laughs> I love he's the camera. Amazing. It's just a real shame that he's been so busy lately. He's been busy with everything. He's been flying yeah. all over the country. I think he's going to the States in a couple of weeks um, to look at buying some land and stuff like that. He's uber, uber, uber busy, even though he's got bike builds on the go. Yeah. Um, but we haven't seen too much of him lately because he has been so busy. But he's amazingly narcissistic, and he comes up with lots of little ideas and little things that, that he's that, that he's up. very good at self promotion. Obviously, having the bike shed and the bike shed thing, and yeah, all he's of a that. Founder you know, member of the bike shed. That as well, didn't so. make itself. No, but no, it we will. We'll do anyway. That's another that. episode, right? So when season you, four, season four of the uh, the Ballard <laughs> Parry saga, Dis- distortion <laughs> Parry. Oh yeah, that's mint my name, distortion. Isn't it? Mint distortion. Oh my lord. <laughs> so okay, what? Well, Let's do people we know. Buster comes to you with a bike, right? Yes. And he says to you, I've got this. And you say, yes, I can do this. Yes. But we have to do this. Yes. And Buster is a big fella. He's fucking enormous. And he's very strong-willed. Seriously, yeah. But you and him seem to get on like a house on fire. Yeah, love him like a brother. Is that from bike building or is that you've known him years? That That's from, but we met way back in the day when I was at, at Ducati, I think he rode up. Because he's uh, always had a fast bike always underneath had, him. Always had, always had fast bike. Lots of Suzuki 13s, lots of... Yeah, boosters, uh, TL1000, uh, S's, R's and S's and mm. big stuff, big stuff, big stuff. But um, he, well, I got talking to him in the car park at Ducati about this, that and the other. And he said, oh, a few of my mates are going to Spain. Do you want to hook up and go to Spain? I was like, yeah, we'll go to Spain, I'll go to Spain. And it turned out that this little band of lonely lost pissheads was called Larry. yes. And Larry, based on the fairy advert, washing up liquid, right. it was called Larry, and you had to get your Larry tattoo and blah, blah, blah. Oh, dear. And you'd turn up in Spain and you'd, you'd, you'd have to have women's clothing on or some gimp teeth or... I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't I, I, There I, were rules. Yeah, there were rules, but that was back when I did used to drink. Mm. And, uh, yeah, so I... Um, yeah, that's how, that's how I met Buster. And, yeah, Buster is very strong-willed, but, yeah. I can get you can. <laughs> do you know yeah but you can see I was so like I said we met up in a at a bike show a little tiny thing a bike show but there was loads of quality there mm. right and I was walking around I had my kid and my wife with me and we were walking around and I thought that's Buster mm. and I thought that's the that's mint cut right penny dropped and yeah. I thought right no one knows me right Buster won't remember me so I will just have a little shift to eat and then I'll go away quietly no hello Jim <laughs> hello Jim you're right mate I'm like oh hello oh, hello Jim uh, yeah that was a really long time yeah and then I thought because you that's I remember you saying that yeah really long time since then I'm like yeah well that's got to have been 
a long time. I can't. Don't ask me when. I can't remember what happened yesterday. No, this morning. Or well, I'm. I, it's got to be between twenty to fifteen years, more than likely. I'd have thought. Right on that. Right, but the least it could have been is twelve. I think. <laughs> the way that works. So there we go. Sometime in the in the dark, murky past, when we both were still drinking. Yes. And uh, yeah, but that was cool because then I could actually get inside your head a bit, going, "Well, you build this." And I got all excited about the whole thing. Not I actually built all all the, all yeah. the bikes. Yeah, yeah, but I hadn't realised that. Yeah, yeah. It's just because Buster said, "No, oh, yeah, that's mine," and I'm like, "What? No, no. That's how's that fair?" And then we started talking about it a little bit. And then my son came over and my wife came over and I had to go because, you know, wife's son. Yes. But what I saw was a motorcycle that I completely and utterly understood in as much as that, look at the aesthetics, it's rideable. Yeah, all rideable. Yeah, that's the key yeah, to me. Time, yeah. You know, you can yeah. be a cake decorator all you like, yeah. right? But if you can't ride it, what's the point? So that's the cool thing, right? Then, then I saw the YouTube channel. Then I saw the progression of all that. So your boys and your promo, that's getting out there. Yeah. Also, you built a bike for Jez's missus. I did, yeah. Because obviously, about. Jez, I've known Jez for yeah. hundred years. You know, we come yeah. from all that. And PJ. You, you, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we all we know the same people. Yes, as well. we do. That's yeah. the thing. But so, where does Mint Customs go? Where? What's the plan? I haven't got one. That's excellent. Never had one. When I when I left Ducati, um, because I was freelancing a lot of superbike teams and this, that and the other, mm. I set up a company called DTM Racing. And DTM Racing came about because um, I would turn up at a race meeting with my bike, unload all my bikes, and if there was a um, morning test session, I feel the cold, I used to put on a jumper yep. over my levers go out, just do my morning test, set my bike up. And I was always quite, on my, I'm quite happy in my, in my gazebo, with my bikes, tinker, 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 tinker. Want to be insular, go this away. The other. But I always had this jumper on, and this jumper I had on had Dennis the Menace on it, and Nasha, yeah. black and white, and I've still got the jumper. Bino. And it's manky, yeah. it's manky now. I would but I have still got it. And, uh, got and then somebody shit. said to me, uh, somebody said to me, oh, um, Somebody said to somebody else, well, I've got a problem with my shock, or this, that, this, that, and the other. And then they said, well, why don't you go see Simon at DTM Racing? Mm. And uh, he's like, DTM Racing? He goes, yeah, we, we nicknamed him around the paddock DTM because it's Dennis the Menace <laughs> on, on his jumper. <laughs> and they're like, oh, right, oh, okay. Anyway, that and then he came in and said, are you Simon from DTM Racing? And I'm like, I don't, nah, I don't, I don't know where they are in, in paddock. And he went, no, Dennis the Menace, and pointed at... I'm like, oh, all right. Oh, anyway, no, very funny. But that actually started off the fact that I'd got myself a unit in um, a little village called Breachwood Green, which is near Luton. It's actually on the flight path into Luton. Right. A tiny little village. I got a, li a little unit off the beaten track. I'd got myself a ramp, got my tools, my tyre machines, my everything else sorted out. And I was just a little one man band. Cool. Sam was just about to leave school. And, uh, and, I, and I just set up, built race bike, built some mad ass cool bikes in there. Nuts's first ever calf racer GSXR 1100. Right, we, we built in there okay. back in the day. This is prior to calf racers yeah. kicking off. Yeah, yeah. This calf racer thing that's that it was prior to that. We and it was actually Sam that helped build it from school. He used to come over from school. Yeah, and I'd say, Look, we've got a bike to build for nuts. What do you want to do? Let's do a calf racer. He's like, What's that? I was like, Drop bars, Make it just round. All, all, all naked, drop bars on it, just a stubby headlight, and and uh, so yeah that's where that was born so DTM Racing was then sitting qu chatting quite along hmm. on its own until um, I used I, I wanted to get a dyno yep seriously seriously wanted to get a dyno looked into getting a dyno bumped into a mate of mine called Shane who had a business in Letchworth called A&M Motorcycles in Letchworth hmm. still there still going yeah. and Shane is still going still Come a on. mate of mine and uh, said to him I want to get a dyno should we get a dyno and he's like yeah why don't you move into into A and M and we'll set a dyno up. All right, okay. And that's what's happened there. So DTM went, was yep. gone, and uh, was, was 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 disappeared. And it was from there that I was spending so much time at Superbike that Shane said to me, "Are you here or are you not here?" Yep. I said, "Well, actually, I'm. I want to go Superbike racing. Mm. I'm, I'm in my allegiances to the paddock. I want to be in the paddock. They're my." extended family is in the paddock so having a little bit of hassle at home right 
so it was quite happy to go off and have this little extended family in the paddock and I left there and it's from there that Mint was born right and, uh, and Mint was born through the fact that Alistair phoned me at home I was home I was working for Martin House or Housel Racing mm-hmm. Superbike and um, and I was at home and Alistair rang and said I've got your number Are you a man to talk to about Ducati's I was like, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I did, yes. Oh, yes. I had a double garage at home, and, it was, and I'd moved everything into my little double garage. Yep. It, it was quite a nice little setup. And, uh, and he said, oh, I've got a problem with the bike. Can I bring it up? Yeah, sure, bring it up. And um, he brought this little tatty old 900 SS up, and he said, oh, I know you. And I said, all oh, right, where's that from? He said, oh, not only just from Ducati, he said, but you've got the 900 calf racer Ducati. I said... Yeah, I said, yeah, I built that many, many years ago. Mm. Prior to this calf race thing going on, I had this naked 900 SS, and uh, which I thought was a piss pot lid. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know why. Because <laughs> you it go. Was, I was completely rebelling against Superbike because I'd spend two weeks away at Superbike building these immaculate 100,000 pounds worth of... <laughs> The bike. I mean, just the swing arm in these things was ten grand. Yeah, do you know what I mean? And They're then like, you went to building bikes. Uh, yeah, that cost like, quid. Fuck the establishment. When I get home, piss pot, <laughs> banging on Ducati. I've got a scarf. I'm safe. Mm. That's it. So yeah, was it anti? That's my punk. Yes, that's my punk rock. You'll find in your life, right? When oh, yeah. you look at it, there are always cycles, it's black or white circles. Thing. Yeah, it's well, happened in all of it. He said, "Oh, it, it's knackered. It's not running properly." And I said, "Let's, let's cut it up." And uh, he's like, "What?" I said, "Let's cut it up." He went, "Oh no, I'm not. I'm not a fan of that." I said, oh, I, 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 "I am not a fan of that. I am a fan of that." And I gave him a hacksaw. Yeah. I said, "Just cut." I, I said, "I'll put a little sharpie line on the frame, right, right in the middle of the frame." I said, "Cut it in half." I said, "And then leave the rest to me." And he's like, "Oh, all right then." And 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 today, yeah, this day, this day today yeah. is the anniversary of the hacksaw. No way. Yeah. Wait, Four, what's the date? Five, five years. Five, 5th of March. 5th of March. 5th of March, five is, years ago. Is the anniversary 2014. of that hacksaw. And that hacksaw chopping, if you hadn't have said, let's cut this up, Mint Customs no. may not be here today. No, wouldn't happen. Because Mint came about because he would phone me every other day and say, how's my bike looking? I was like, Alice, it's looking Mint. It's, <laughs> it's, it's me. That's it. And he's That's like, where it comes all right, from. Oh, okay, okay. I said, leave it. He goes, he said, I'll tell you what I'll do. He said, I'll leave, give you full rain on right. the bike. Okay. He said, as long as it's not pink, yeah. you can do whatever you like. See, ta- you name it, you can do whatever you like to it. Yeah. But. As long as it's not pink. Not pink. I said, really? And he's like, yeah, yeah. I said, what, well, paint scheme? I can do anything I want as long as it's not pink. He said, yeah, yeah. He said, I trust you emphatically. Uh oh. <laughs> well, uh, I was going through a phase of doing white frames. Right. I did um, a couple of 1200 bandits with white frames, extended swing arms. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. And, um, and I, I thought, I'm going to white frame it. I'm going to, because bang, if I make a really nice job of the subframe, I mean, this is in my garage at home, I'm cutting and shutting and I'm welding. And if I make a really nice job of the subframe and it's in white, it'll pop. Mm. And uh, as did the bandit. The bandits look, both look really, really cool with it. Yeah. And um, and they they read a couple of weeks later. What's it looking like? Fucking mint. It's mint. And he went, I'm not going to be able to see it. And I went, no. <laughs> <laughs> not to the day it's driven out of the garage. Oh, mate. I opened the garage door like that. And it, it sat there. This was due to go to the bike shed. Right. The second ever bike shed show. Because he was so involved with bike shed. Mm. He said, I'm having a bike built for the bike shed. And... Uh, unbeknown to me and, and then he brought me a poster in and said that's the shit the show that we're going to the bike shed show insured it in tobacco dock and that's what this bike's for and i was like Fuck, if he'd have told me it was a show bike yeah because i, w- I wouldn't have done there's that a, there's a massive <laughs> difference one is if you've got a ten thousand pound budget to build a holly davidson custom bike for instance that is a rideable usable everyday bike that will look yep. cool as fuck if you want a show bike you've got a 20 grand yeah, yeah, yeah. twenty thousand pounds so I always say a 20 grand short of a show bike. It's not a show bike. It's a usable bike. It's cool as fuck bike. Mm. But it's usable. So um, I'm then looking at this thing going, Christ, I've got two weeks left to do it. Blah, blah, blah. And it has got to be, I've got to pull something out of the back. Yeah. So I had to go, I went a little bit Banzai and I'll sit, because I've got a thinking chair. 
and I'm sat looking at it in the garage and I'm like, I've got to pull something out of the bag. I've got to pull the pod filters out of the fuel injection. I've got, I'm going to invert the shock. I'm going to fill the swing arm in. I'm going to do this. And I, and I went at it, Banzai. And uh, way, way over budget. Right. But he'd given me a budget. So I'd already spunked yeah. way over budget. It had a Stars and Stripes paint job on it. Right. Full rainbow metal flake over uh, an Audi grey. Right. White stripe right the way through the bike and little red stars all the way through this white stripe. That sounds awesome. It took for... Oh, it, it was an amazing looking bike. I remember opening the garage door and he went, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, it's mint, isn't it? And he's like, yeah, it's mint. But I mean, the matching wheels and everything. So yeah. he... So the end result of that was, yes, I'm taking that to the show. Yes, yes, did, hell, yes. I'm doing that. And as you walk through the front door, it was that there bike. It was. Oh, excellent. And and I, I st- I, he said, <coughs> do you come into the show? I said, no, the last thing I want to do mm. is stand anywhere near a bike that I've just built and have loads of people going, oh, I wouldn't have done that. Yeah. I wouldn't have done that. Because that does, I'm, I am reasonably thick skinned, but when you get a critique, I'm happy for it if it's constructive. Yeah. If it's like, I don't like that because it's white, yeah. that's not very constructive. No. If it's, I don't like that because I don't think it would work properly unless you add it that way up, mm. I'd like, all oh, right, okay. I'm a sponge. There's, I'm a, there's an aesthetic criticism. Yes. Yeah? And then there's there's a, an industrial or, or a mechanical criticism. I, I'm a, I'll have that. And, and then there's the, I'm a twat who doesn't know anything about anything and I'm going to tell you why you're wrong because I live in my living room and I eat too many crisps got loads of those yeah I get that a lot from everyone about most of my life you did a thing on criticism yeah I did I did now but all all criticism right when you're taking criticism from somebody else <clears throat> and they have a point yeah and they have a reason to yeah. give that criticism 20 years ago I'd have gone who the fuck are you talking to now I go, do you know what? You've got a point. Now elaborate on that point and tell me. Oh, I, because need, I need to know everything. Not I'll it. take it. Self-learning, self-education at yeah. 45. I'm a sponge. I said earlier, you, I'm a sponge. You've said that all along. It mm. took me 30 years to get over myself, to get rid of my insecurities, to get rid of my bullshit, if you like. Yes, there's a lot still left. <laughs> but now I'm, I'm into it. But also you criticise me and you do it from a standpoint of reason and you know you have a following argument I'm going to listen to you so am I yeah. and I'm probably going to thank you when it's the right thing so would I that's it, what my criticism video was about but I can I see and smell the bullshit yeah a mile away I've been doing this just slightly long enough now where if somebody goes I've got I'm going to hurt you mate I've got a back I've got a back catalogue of get backs but I think I think in a former former life I must have been a stand up comedian. Right. You know when they're on it yeah. with a with a with a with a with a back hit. Well what the one bloke said to me the size of that petrol tank. You probably only get hundred miles out of that. How far is that gonna get you? Bang. I said about hundred miles away, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you just and he looked it. over his shoulder like that because he I was stood there and uh, and actually it wasn't one of my bikes but it was it did have a really small fuel tank <laughs> on it and I did think to myself that is actually a really small fuel tank <laughs> but yeah. it weren't one of my builds but it was just a snapback where I think well there was absolutely no need to say that mm. it, yes it did look a really small fuel tank but I thought that but I didn't go that's a really small fuel tank because <sighs> you don't also you will understand this as well when you're building something and you have a vision. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, people don't understand what that vision is or where it comes from because they're not you inside your head. No, they're not. So by all means, ask what 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 yes, are you please. doing with that? Yeah, why have you done that? Yeah. Cause and effect. This does this. This it does help this. Help me to understand. Yeah. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then I have to think of an explanation for you. But that's yeah. the cool thing about what I saw and continue to see is the fact that you may not have a hundred percent plan but you have you have the inertia behind you it's a really good 70% yeah listen <laughs> listen I'm more than off strong right? 70% I'm strong enough for 70 but if you also though a whole plan would limit the building process right that I used to watch and probably still do if I'm honest people like Billy Lane yeah you know Indian Larry Ooh. there's a picture of Indian Larry on my wall over there right yeah, simply mate. because with a gold train yeah yeah so these people were people that I looked to going wow you're magic that's yeah. what you do but you're doing that 
No. You're doing the magic thing. No, that's the thing. But I know you can, right. Man, you put me in that catalogue with, with, with any of that lot, then... Okay, okay. Before Billy um, went to prison, did all of that, yeah. and just didn't change his bike building because he's built some serious shit since then. But, right, you build motorcycles like he does. Right, he he concentrates now on the older bikes, likes his flat track, does all that. Yeah. Indian Larry <clears throat> had brand new engines made, but with his twist, he he was the first one to do the do the twisted metal frames and, yeah, and the chain trip. frame as well. Yeah. Right, but you and I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. This is the way I genuinely see it. Because if you didn't interest me, you wouldn't be sat here. Why would you? <laughs> right. So that's what I see when you when I saw those bikes in that field in I can't even remember where the hell it was in a village. Right. I saw in, that in Walmer Green Walmer Green something. that was it well, it was Walmer Green yeah. right and the only reason I was there was because my son saw a picture for it and my wife said we'll go that's the only reason yeah. I was there because I love cars I love bikes do all that you know I've I've um you know I've always had a little thing inside my head just to like relate to the building thing and I like all that I couldn't build my way out of a paper bag motorcycle or car wise but that doesn't mean I can't love them you'll be surprised well yeah, well, yeah. Well, one day we'll have that conversation yeah we will when episode I, 7 episode 7 but the cool thing that, that I've seen now is also you have three things going on you have a business that seems to be growing in the direction you want it to yeah you also have your three kids oh, amazing involved in that business amazing right with which yeah. my son Samuel is five years old in three weeks. Right, I've got a long way to go. I never expected to be married, kids. I was too busy being drunk and doing all that. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So you know, you, you've got a few years in, ahead of me on that. But you know, it, he's already starting to go. Oh, that is welding this metal business. What yeah. you know? What, what do I do with that? And I'm like, oh, hello. That's and my wife says to him, you know, well, watch what daddy's doing. Watch, you know, we'll see what's going on. And I'm thinking, don't watch too closely. But, you know, it's it, that interest. That must feel great to have your kids behind it's, you with this. It's puffed. It's puffed. The, um, I, I messaged Tom on, well, I messaged all the boys, but I mean, mm. almost on a daily basis. At the end of a day, a good working day, I work, because I've posted them into the big workshop. And I'm still in the little workshop with, with um, Alistair. Right. So I've got a hell of a walk to the toilet. <laughs> <coughs> but you have to watch yourself on anyway, curry night. I mean, we're absolutely it, 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 it was quite a massive plot we got there now. So the two the two boy Jack, my youngest boy, is a massive guitarist. He's got mm -hmm. a brilliant band called The Habits that that will probably go on to do some amazing stuff. He's an amazing guitarist, Wicked. and which actually does that to me. Yeah. When you're like, oh. I don't know. <laughs> And, yeah. uh, and it, it, he's not mechanically minded, but Tom and Sam, I walk in to their workshop where I'm just walking in, one, to keep a half an eye on what's going on, what they're doing, how they're building, what direction they're going in, how many donuts are left. Yeah, obviously. And uh, and I'll glance around, I normally go, I'm just, uh, I'm just having a wee, having a wee, but on my way through, I'm looking at exactly what's going on. Mm. And at the tail end of that day, I'll see what they've done, and I'll see what they've built, I'll go over it, or I'll get called in, Dad, can we do this? Dad, how does that work? Yep. How do I get that off of there? <laughs> whatever, whatever. Got an angle grinder, haven't you? Yeah. And um, so, and I'll, I'll message them at the end of that day. I'll get home and I'll go, proud dad moment. Hmm. The, the bikes are stunning. Your ideas are stunning. Yep. I don't know where you're getting them from. Right. Well, Sam's idea to pull this 300cc two-stroke motor into this. That is barking, man. Even I haven't come up with anything that mad. I mean that's 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 deep. So Sam Sam built the BMW. Sam built the calf racer BMW. Yeah. yeah, I watched that three yeah. times. Cracking little right? bike. Because cracking little cause bike. Those engines, right? You either love them BMW yeah. side engines I, I or you hate them, right? Yeah, I do. Now I, I my opinion is, oh god, right? Why would you do that to yourself? Yeah. All right, but then you see Sam's bike, right? The lines are right. The engine's right for what's in it. Everything right. Tell me it rides right. It's amazing to ride. It's so smooth, so comfortable. I don't know how we did it. No, but that's, the, that's, the beauty, that's the beauty of it because that means he's got the same spark yeah. that fueled you. The, the, what you don't see is that just the two rear, we, we cut the arse end off the bike. Yep. So to build the rear subframe, the, just the two arcs that come from the bottom up to the shock mount. Yep. There's just two tubes like that. And then the top bit. What you don't see is the pile. The pile of bent tubes oh, no. on the floor because it wasn't quite exactly the same as the other one. Right. And I'm like, Sam, you're using all my tube. 
He's yeah. like, it's not. I said, well, hone it back, make it, make it look like the other one. It's got to be right, Dad. That's a, Trouble is, what the money side Fair of you is going. How much tube are you using? How much tube? The yeah. aesthetic side of you is going. Oh, then right and all. Told him to go and get his own tube. Yeah, oh, yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, a day later he's walking in with a big, eight foot long. I've got a seven foot, mate. We're all right. <laughs> Should be able to get one bend. Twenty two bends later. Yeah. Right. Well, that, you know, this is the point with it all. We're all going somewhere. We've all got. We've all got worlds that we want to expand and and live through. But it, very rarely do we actually. Do we actually find people who go and do it? Yeah. Because mostly these people are like yourself, a little bit insular with where you work, with where you go and what you do, right? But you know the right people, you know how to do it, blessed. you know what's happening. Very do you know blessed. What I mean? Yeah. So, you know, with me, it's, you know, now I, I'm in a position to have a, a room in a, in a tattoo shop that I happen to own half of, you know, that we use for. Also, I have a workshop. Actually, until the end of this month, I have a workshop. Then I have another workshop, apparently, but not not been told when I can move in yet. <laughs> so it was going to be move from one to the other, because that would make sense. Now it's going to be Limbo. move from one, put in van, panic for three weeks. Ah, that's <laughs> so, never good. No, nah, that'll work. But it's, you know, we... Want to rent some space? No, thank you. <laughs> well, actually, maybe. Maybe, no. yeah. Um, it's it's one of those things, though, when when three years four years ago I'd have never dreamt I'd have a workshop to build things I would never even have attempted to go and build furniture now I'm doing it because people keep phoning me up and asking me for yes. it which is mental isn't it I'm um, talking about I've got to talk to Buster as well crap I for, I have to build him a cookie he said cook thing I've forgotten all about that oh. right I'll call him yeah. <laughs> sorry Buster oh I'm in so much trouble um so yeah, that, that's your fault. That is that I've remembered because I was looking at you. And thought Buster, oh crap, Buster. poor boy. But he'll I'll, he'll forgive me when it's marvelous. I'm sure he will. When you have the ability to do what you do and you love to have that, and you can involve family, I would suggest that you kind of reach the pinnacle of where you're going. But yeah. it can only blossom from there because your kids get and older, you, and you can't push. Because I tried pushing. Yeah. Um, I tried pushing. Um, Tom when he was younger the middle mm. when he was younger and now to this day now he'll say I'll message him of an evening and say great job today bikes are looking great I'm super proud love you loads and he'll ping back and he'll say it's all because of you dad now's the moment Yeah, the moment wasn't one when yeah, because I had a lot of time away from them when when we split I split with a mum so yeah. there was there was massive gaps and and he's the one that I always thought I'd have a bit of a battle with because he's quite strong mm -hmm. um, in the head and very stubborn. Don't know where he gets that from. No, couldn't couldn't but point that finger. He said, but he's saying to me now, now's the moment. It wasn't then. Yeah, that that was I wasn't ready to do what I need to do now. He's an electrician. Yeah, by trade. Um, but his forte is this, and his passion is this. And he was saying to me, I wasn't ready to come to work for you then. I didn't want to do that then. Now's the time I feel ready. So if you start, I think if you try and push that blossom in, then they'll, they'll wilt, mm. and and it will, the opposite thing will happen. Yeah. So they'll run from what, you. What it is is a bit of a carrot dangler, mm. especially with Sam, because Sam was a, was uh, um, came to work for me when he was fifteen, when I had my first little unit, and then followed me to the main Suzuki main dealer, which is where he got all his um, yep. accreditation from, and then after that he kind of went his own way. He went off to do some superbike stuff, and in the meantime, he was working for Honda in London, fixing pizza bikes and stuff like that. In that month, and I'm, I'm like, well, I'm going to be, you know, let's, this, I'm going to be, might be doing this, that, this, that, and the other. And he's like, all right, but I'm like, in your mm. own time, yes, yeah. that's. I might be there. I might be there when because, you. Because geez, who's who? The hell would I want on my team? Mm. A fully trained tech. Fully trained Odin's technician, superbike career, X racer, Super Sport 600, mm -hmm. Hornet Cup CB 500s, motocross, you name it, Sam's raced it. He knows his stuff, mate. It, yeah, so I'm like, who would I want on my team? Mm -hmm. Let me think about that. And how much would it cost? Well, mm. I could definitely get away with not paying him too much. <laughs> <laughs> He's my boy after all. He'll I understand. Yeah, yeah, ginger nuts. But then also, thinking purely selfishly for you, yeah, Tom's a flipping sparky, right? So then he can do the horrible wiring job. He's he's done the workshop. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the, yeah, we have had a bit of hassle with some of the wiring because uh, nobody in there does the wiring. 
and I, so it's me. I, I actually really like making wiring looms. I actually, because you sit, I sit down in my little leather chair, in my little comfy chair. Thinking chair. Got me, I mean, thinking chair, that is a thinking chair. And, uh, and have a brew, have a roll up on the go, and I'll sit and I'll draw what I need. Yep. So well, I've got a regular rectifier, I've got a star solar, I've got this, and this, and this, and a battery, and I, knew, and I need to hook it all up. So I want to hook it up in as l least wiring as possible, safe as possible, with the odd fuse. Yeah. That's, that's all you need. And a, and a basic Harley Davidson, a points and condenser Harley Davidson, yep. is two wires. If you can turn the starter motor over, you can get a remote button on the that goes straight onto the starter motor, right. it'll run. Beautiful. Two, two wires. Well, it's a glorified shit pump, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it is a mate, but they're amazing. Uh, yeah. So the, the wiring wise, it's that. And Alistair's like, oh, I hate wiring, I hate wiring. Can you wire that? I hate wiring. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's simple. All you've got to do is just map it out. Map it out. Or download a wiring diagram. <laughs> oh, I can't look at them, make my eyes go funny. You think, do, do you, put, you know what they're actually saying? Don't want to do that. Don't want to do that. Don't want to do yeah. that. Don't want to do that. Oh, of course I do. That's all. That's all they're saying. Of course I do. And I've you're been, going. I've had a million apprentices. Someone's got to bloody world. do it. Yeah, a million apprentices. But then, what well, you know, the, the the thing about that is though as well is that you everyone when you've got you've got a family full of these people, right? Mm. Plus Alistair, plus yeah, yeah, the yeah. other people around you. Yeah. And then people naturally find their space they do and if you were to push somebody into the engine as kid, carrier yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh man he's a big fella he's a unit he knows how, uh, he knows how he, to pick things he does up cars he's he's in the he's in the, the unit opposite us right but i've never seen him finish a car he's he's never finished i i mean he's an amazing character and he will do anything for you yeah but it's normally if i'm in there late of an because i'm i'm the first one in i'm the last one out the door yeah so, and I can be in there 10, 11 o'clock at night because mm -hmm. I want to get something done or I've got a beer in my bonnet or that hasn't worked out right and I'm not leaving till it goes right. And it's always Lee. Mm. It's always, I'm like, Lee, across <laughs> the yard and he's in. Mm. What do you want? <laughs> and then he'll have the odd idea and he'll go, I've just finished welding a frame up or whatever or whatever. And he's like, well, uh, or I built a moto. It was about two o'clock in the morning. I'd finished building this Harley motor. From yep. Right up, right up, right up. And he said, uh, and he was helping me out with it. I was doing the head starts up and it was like ready to go in and I'm like, this thing's ready to go in. And he said, let's put it in the frame then. I said, it's two o'clock in the morning, Lee. He's like, yeah, but... Go on, let's have it. Do we have it in the frame? <laughs> he's a complete nut. He picked it up with his fingertips. But he's amazing. <laughs> he, he, get, he doesn't drink any of our tea. He does eat our biscuits. Yeah, well... Yeah. Um, he wants for nothing. He, I have to weld some stuff up for him every now and again. But if I had to phone him at four o'clock in the morning... It'd, it'd be there. It'd be there. There are some people who, who I've found this just since I started doing this metal work stuff as well that genuinely want you to succeed. Yeah. And, and how they, cool is that? Well, I've when have you ever had that? Never. During your normal adult never. growing up. Well, I've had I had a few normal jobs. I don't really do that. But then there was this middle management prick always with a red tie and a white shirt who looked at me like I was scum. And I, I always used to say before I got quit, before I got fired, yeah, it's you who are limited, not me. It's yeah, you yeah, yeah. who can't go any further. I'm on the way out the door. You can fuck off. <laughs> yeah. right? And then it, no one would understand yeah. why I did yeah. that. And it's like, I don't, can't be limited by you people because I may, I may completely and utterly screw everything up for the rest of my life, yeah. but it's not through the want to try it. No. Nope. I'll always try and do it. And now I'm starting to succeed. Now, because I've stopped hoofing large amounts of clamber up my hooter, stop standing in the front of a stage pretending that I'm a uh, rock god, you know, given all that. Yeah. But that had to lead me to where I am. Everything does. And there's I always, think, there's a path somewhere along the line. Well, well however meandering yeah, that might but be. But that's back to the stubborn thing. You've got to be stubborn at some yeah. point with yourself. Yeah. You said to yourself, I'm not stuffing that in my face anymore. Yeah. You were stubborn with yourself there. Yeah. I, I was, the, the, I used to have a little bit of pot, and, but amphetamine was my hit. Mm -hmm. It was a, a, a but that was all prior to going on stage and that was always a 90s thing. Mm. But I was strong enough and stubborn enough to say, actually, I don't need this. I mean, my good friends, especially, we know that Ed, smash, Ed is, is in remission and bless mm. him, he's he's been clean for, I think this is his 13th year this year. We had a celebration for him Sweet. Um, before the last set of gigs with smash. And, um, but it's, the, it's people like that you see that haven't come back. Mm. And you're like, man, why? Why weren't you strong enough? Mm. Why, well, how come I was? I, how come I could go? I, 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 I think I ain't having it. I'm not with, having it. Not with having strength it. and things like that. I mean, I was very lucky in as much as that I went into a hospital, was told I wasn't coming out. 
kidneys packed up, liver packed up, done all that. But what had happened was, is that my body shut down to reboot. Right, yeah, yeah. So basically, after fo- I'd phoned my dad and said, I'm on the way out, mate. He lives in France. I'm on the way out, mate, and I ain't kidding. Uh, you, if we need to talk. He, he walks in the hospital, I'm putting my clothes on, and then going home. And he's like, what, what the hell are you doing? And I'm like, right, we've it got... went into self-heal. Yeah, into... Well, well, that's... What happened was, is my body went... And it was a one-time deal, and I knew it. I'd gone out, I, was, I went on a super massive binge. Yeah, everything you can imagine. Drunk myself into a puddle, woke up <coughs> in a hospital bed, and I can't tell you how I got there. Still, to this day, no one had told me. But I've got an inkling that a friend of mine actually found me and went, right, enough. Whoosh. Woke up in that. And then uh, they said, right, your kidneys are packed up. I had this rash all over me. Yeah, yeah. Because um, when your kidneys don't work, it pushes it out through the skin. Yeah. And I looked like a triffid. Do you remember the day of the triffids? Yeah, yeah. yeah, right. I looked like that. Yeah, it was horrible. Right. And then uh, they had students coming around going, you, you won't have seen this before. Look at this. <laughs> and it was like, right. And then it started to dawn on me that what I'm on the way out. So I made kind of a weird peace with everything. Yeah. You can either fight it or you can hate it. And what was the point? So I made a few phone calls, said a few sorries, said, right, it's all fine. And then uh, then he came back in and I started to get better. And I was like, is this real? Am I okay? And he said, no, you're fucked. But you're getting better. And yeah. it, So what, what happens is apparently sometimes your body shuts down for long enough to then start and purge it. And if you let it... It will do it. Then you, you're going to be all right. Now, my liver function now is perfect. My kidneys are a little bit hoofed. But that's all right. <laughs> but what the stupid thing was then is the next day I got out of hospital on that day, went out, celebrated the fact that I got out. Halfway through that celebration, I thought, fuck, I've done it. I've, I've killed it, passed out. Right? And this is the weirdest thing. I woke up in that same bed oh, in the list man. hospital again. And the, and the doctor just said, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. And I, said, and I said, nothing now. Okay, this is it. And it has been. From that day to now, I've been clean. I don't, you know, I've not done anything bad with this. And I've had a bit of a focus. I had a drive. You know, I, we, the next band I did with uh, Distorted Breed was to keep me clean. So I had something to do while I healed, while I made everything all right. And that Dirt Rock Band, we went on little tours, we went and did everything, we had a great time, we did it on our own. We did, it wasn't about money, you know, it couldn't That's have not been. About having a crack. Yeah, we made an EP <laughs> and we had a great time doing it. And there was a group of guys who knew what my demons were and supported yeah, yeah. me for that. Yeah. So, and that was fine, and I was lucky with that. And from that moment then, you know, cause and effect, got clean, sorted myself out, met my wife in the Blackbirds of all places. Um, and then you know then now I have a child now we've had this business we've had this business for seven years yeah yeah and that's been hand to mouth and there are troubles sometimes but you understand that that's fine but we are still here I've got signs on the ceiling you know yeah. and we've painted bricks on the wall <laughs> so now you know I'm starting to see look self education learn as much as you can get where you're going yeah and you, you, that's a zeal that I genuinely have that's the natural thing that you've had to do mm. to get to where you're at otherwise yeah. That none of this would have happened if I hadn't have fallen down as it were yeah. metaphorically speaking I wouldn't be now here talking to you about how you came up how I came up how we've made what we've got work I had an upset prior to um, prior to actually going to work for Decay I had um, I collapsed at work mm. and then I woke up in the uh, Royal Free in London right and um the boy's mum, Helen, said that she got home, she found me on the floor at home. She got an ambulance. First of all, I thought it was meningitis. Right. And then they um, ended up in an ambulance going to QE2. And they put a scan, they put me through a scan at QE2 because I was, there was some, obviously something going wrong with my head. Okay. Uh, with the way I was acting. But I remember nothing. And then uh, they saw a swelling on my, on my head. So they police ambulanced me to the Royal Free. Right. Where I had a spinal tap. I had, you name it, I had drains in there going on, whatever, 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 whatever was going on. Yeah. And weeks later, I'm, I'm, I'm sorted. I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy. But she's telling me that in the ambulance on the way there, they said that he's got a 70% chance of being spoon-fed. This is not, this is not looking good. Right. Um, with everything that's gone on, he's not he's not responding to anything. He's blah 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 blah. blah. Whatever they were draining out my spa, I've still got back problems from that now, but that's irrelevant. <laughs> but eye opener because 
Um, I'm sat at home in my slippers and my dressing gown, and I've got my boys, and it's like that. That's that. That that weren't funny. That, and not long prior to that, my dad had, had died through drink. Right, drink killed him. Out and out, shall of a doubt. Mm. Cirrhosis of everything, everything, everything. Pickled him, killed him. Right. So it was like, but that was pub days. That was whatever, whatever. Grown, been a landlord of the pub. Yep. So there was things like, mm, and they said, well, there's issues like with to to save yourself and to save the way that you're going because you're going in a pretty bad way with what you're doing, how much you're drinking. Yep. whatever you're smoking whatever you're doing whatever what you need to do is calm yourself down a little bit and uh, so I'm like right okay fair enough so and it was like don't do salt don't do caffeine don't do this don't do that don't do this and I'm like what, I, what's left <laughs> what am I going to do what am I going to do here yeah. what am I going to do here but it was from that was my wakener right. because it was like I, I, actually, I could have gone then mm. and if I'd have gone then that's irrelevant to all the bike crashes. That's irrelevant to all the the the, the times that you do actually think, Jesus Christ, or you you dragging your broken foot up the road or whatever, whatever, <laughs> yeah. with your bike, thinking, oh, I've got away with that. This was like a real one. Yeah. Because I haven't got a f- my fear of, even at fifty two nearly. Yeah. I still haven't got it. No. The, 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 that's a it's something that's fell off. Yeah. Or I don't know whether it fell off, or whether I wasn't actually born with it, but the, the, it, it isn't there. Yeah. And um and sometimes my skill level does outweigh my fear factor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I can Because you do need a certain amount of skill to cope with whatever you gotta do that's yeah. a bit a bit strange. But it was that day on that that's what urged me to be like I'm I'm gonna to go to work for Ducati was a wage drop. So I'm I'm thinking I've got to provide for a family. But that's what I wanna do. Yeah man. So I was sitting down and saying, I'm sorry, but I really want to do that and I've had a bit of a shake up and I love my boys and I, and I know I want to provide but I'm going to work for Ducati yeah this is the, yeah. This is the, the singing ah oh, moment you know I'm sorry but yeah. that's the way it goes well a few years down the line I actually got offered a job in Bologna um, with the training sector at Ducati right because they have in- interpreters and they have English speaking trainers yeah and one of the guys I knew at at Takata UK he said well there's actually a job going up at the factory um, you can fly out on a Friday afternoon uh, fly home on a Friday afternoon fly back on a Monday morning it's not mm. a problem you can be at home at, at weekends yeah. um, but there you'll get a flat there you'll get everything there and, and, and you'll help us train you guys that come over that fly over mm. and I'm thinking what an amazing job Yeah. what an amazing job but I'd already I'd already took a hit on, on that front and I know that I was never stopped really on doing anything that I kind of wanted to do. There's that's episode twelve, <laughs> but I turned it down. Right. Um, I actually wasn't with the boys' mm. um, mum at that, that time because it was a couple of years later, and I actually thought I can't actually do this because I will be away a lot, and if I do get home late of a Friday night and I need to be ready for Sunday morning I'm, I, and actually I said I said no I turned it down yeah the reality of that wasn't enough to be with your kids was it nah nah you but see they're, they're cool, a, cool job. that's an amazing thing to be offered as well yeah. but like you said there are there are certain things and I, I don't believe in it preordained anything right but what I do believe in is that you have an ability to make the decisions that you need to make to go where you're going and sometimes they're wrong so you think but then that wrong path takes you somewhere where you learn another edge to get where you're going because there isn't any short journey through life you've got an amount of time whatever that is yeah but you make a few wrong turns so you think but that wrong turn takes you where you're actually going and i think you know it's if that gk job wasn't supposed to be happening because you might have done that now and then you'd have stayed there do you know what I mean? You'd have you'd have become Ducati and you'd have gone up, you'd have done it maybe. Or, you know, you wouldn't have done this, but it'd have been a different a version two of, of the life. I feel quite humbled because obviously I've I'm this is open. Mm. And uh and I don't mind sharing my punk rocker stories and I don't mind sharing lots of other stuff, but somehow you seem to have got out of me <laughs> some <laughs> queer shit. Hey, and, and I'm actually now just sitting about here life. feeling quite humbled because I've I'm looking back on some of that stuff and I think one, why, how am I still here? Mm. Um, 
I do a, that a few times. A, a good friend of mine said to me while we were out on the dirt bikes in the but absolute but I've had some bad crashes on dirt bikes, but yeah. and uh, and he's and there was this particular hill and it was called the Widowmaker. Right. And it's fucking huge. <laughs> And it was dead straight. And the last bit was actually flat six foot. Right. And you had to hit it flat out. I, I don't know, 60, 70 metre hit. Right. It was enormous in a quarry. Okay. And um, the, the, that bit that's not there all fell off. Um, Your I fear thought, chip had gone. I'm going to, I'll hit it flat out in third. It'll be fine. Flat out, just keep it pinned. I'm sure. And somebody videoed it on a on a video camera right back in, it's a bit wobbly i've got the footage Excellent. i have got the footage of me doing the widow maker and i think somewhere in the clouds somewhere along the line something's not that i believe in god i'm a seriously nah. strict atheist mm. but something's gone oh, and put you on the top that last six foot <laughs> because my back wheel spinning like spat a load of chalk off of the side yeah. and the top was only actually about as wide as this room Right. When you actually get up the top, you have to stop real quick, otherwise you'd fall you're off going the, down the cliff. Side. But I, I remember watching it. Sam said to me ages ago, can you dig out a load of old footage of us on the bikes because I want to put some of it on Mint? Yeah. Can you dig out? And I'm like, right, okay. So I've had to find a video video recorder. How long have we been talking? Uh, two hours. That's a good one, mate. Come on, you finish your story now. And, uh, and I said, yeah, 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 sure, sure. And then I was sitting at home. Obviously, the, the, I, I, I've got a quite, a big, quite a big telly. I blagged it. Don't worry, I didn't pay for it. <laughs> Good. But I've got quite a big telly and I'm like, fucking hell. What? That's fell off. Mm. And then I said to Sam, I've got that video of the, of the Widowmaker. And he said, if you look really closely, you'll, I'm in it. I'm, I'm re, got, got, well, it's not on my phone, but. Yeah. Rewind and he's it. in it on a little PW80. Right. <clears throat> he's this big. And I pull up next to him before I drop down and do this massive Widowmaker. Yeah. And if you watch his head, he's going, No! <laughs> he's telling his dad not to do it. He's going, No, Dad. Oh. But I still done it. You still done it. Not listening to you, kid. Right hand it. Up we anyway, go. Anyway, what I'm saying is, I don't know how I'm still here because I have mm. done some. What? Well, likewise. Yeah. You know, there's some, there's some crazy shit that we, we both obviously have had a, some kind of second chance yeah. I too am an atheist I come from my dad being a vicar and all of that stuff and my family very religious and, uh, yeah I mean it, luckily he said to me when I was a kid he just said oh, it's my religion not yours don't worry about it you know, yeah. I mean, you've got to be in, under the pew playing with cars Same because as. your mother wants to be here <laughs> so where's the mother's from isn't it I'll tell you what we're going to do I think episode one should probably end now yeah but what I needs so. to be said right considering we've never sat in a room together no. and talked no, no that no. was a remarkably free conversation I I don't know how you did it. <laughs> I didn't do anything. We just had a conversation. That's how it works. It's so, very good. So maybe, maybe we'll do it again. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Episode two. Episode two.